Ahoy! On my last video about testing elemental aversion, I got a ton of questions about physical aversion, which I guess makes sense if we're looking at the rewards from the most recent event. All of the blooming petters from the Springtide Bloom event come with physical aversion as well as refreshing locked and have a high chance to roll resilient. So this option is especially appealing for players using light armor. There are two things I wanted to test. On one hand, I finally wanted to find out if there's any truth to the rumor that you can only use one piece of physical aversion because it doesn't stack. And on the other hand, I wanted to see how much reduction we can get from physical aversion. While testing that, we also made some other interesting discoveries that we'll get into towards the end. Thanks to Matt Decent for helping me test this. He was the one who had a full set of aversion already, so I didn't need to get anything. He had everything prepared and I just jumped in and we tried it with various different weapons and hard roots. The first weapon we tried was the bow. It dealt 671 damage without aversion. With one piece of physical aversion, the damage was reduced to 648. So very much reduced as expected. And now we come to the big question. Is it true that physical aversion doesn't stack? No. As you can see here, while one piece of aversion reduces the damage taken to 648, five pieces of physical aversion reduce the damage down to 567. So having more pieces of aversion is absolutely effective. I didn't separately test the musket because I am certain that that works exactly the same way, simply because it is a very basic ranged attack. Some other weapons were less obvious, so I wanted to test them separately. The first one was the hatchet, the throwing hatchet in particular, is somewhere between a melee and ranged attack in some ways, for example it doesn't benefit from ranged bane, so I was curious if it would count as a ranged attack for aversion. The damage with no aversion was 939, with one piece of physical aversion it was 916, and with five pieces of physical aversion it was 809. So the answer here is clearly yes, physical aversion affects hatchet. On the spear I was curious about javelin because while that is a ranged attack it's also an ability and I wanted to see how that works. We had 793 damage with no aversion, 771 damage with one piece of physical aversion and 684 damage with five pieces of physical aversion. So once again this gets reduced as normal. In case of the blunderbuss we skipped the one piece of physical aversion because at this point we had verified that one piece and five pieces are always going to work different. The damage dealt per pellet without aversion was 212, whereas with 5 times fizz aversion it was 179 per pellet. Here are the percentage reduction values as well. You can see that overall fizz aversion roughly introduces a 14 to 16% reduction of damage. That's because various other things factor into damage output and reduction as well. And that's also why you don't see quite consistent numbers between the different weapons here. Other perks factor into that as well. Overall, this is a pretty solid amount of reduction though. But then there was an interesting outlier that we wanted to test. I proved the other day that elemental aversion reduces detonate. But Matt Decent said, what about cannon blast? Cannon blast is not pure elemental damage. The first part of cannon blast is in fact strike damage. And this is particularly interesting because as far as I'm aware, there isn't much ranged strike damage in the game and it's not really what's typically classified as range, usually that thrust damage. I think Path of Destiny may be an outlier here, but either way, what we wanted to test with Cannon Blast is how that is affected by the different types of aversion. We found that with no aversion, the damage was 2307. With five pieces of physical aversion, this damage was reduced to 1940. So this was affected all the same as the others. However, Cannon Blast has two damage components. The first one is this physical damage part, the strike damage part, but then there's also the burning damage afterwards. This damage was not reduced even when the strike damage part was reduced. So we wanted to see if elemental aversion could have an impact here. This is also not the case. Both cases lead to still having a 230 damage tick. This is likely because elemental aversion usually affects direct hit effects and not damage over time effects. The only time we noticed a difference in the damage taken here was when we changed the amount of opals in the armor. So overall, physical aversion seems to be much more consistent than elemental aversion in that it pretty much applies to every ranged physical damage that we could find. This also means that, as I predicted when I first talked about them, the event patterns are actually pretty good. Sure, in most situations players will prefer elemental aversion and in some situations some players may prefer shirking fortification, but especially for light players that may get focused by bows or maybe even muskets make a bit of a comeback more, then you could definitely argue that having at least some pieces of physical aversion could be useful.
but a journey into aversion doesn't end here. I still have more to say about elemental aversion versus shirking fortification and how your current best in slot loadout should look like. So that's something we'll do in the upcoming days. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified. We'll also talk about the new weapon again. I will finally release the expedition guide and I will talk about my gear set for Forge at the moment. If you'd like to support me further, you can do that on Patreon where you can also get early trading tips. Thanks to all of my patrons who do exactly that. Thank you for watching, Duke Sloth, out.